pulse of a human heart. Paris, 1865. Edouard de la Boulogne, a professor of constitutional law and history and a great admirer of American liberty, is inspired by news that slavery in the United States has been abolished. The Civil War is over. To La Boulay, it seems that finally America is fully committed to its founding ideals of human liberty and equality. Nearly a century earlier, France had been a crucial ally in America's war for independence, a war for the cause of liberty. He imagines a monument, a gift from the French people to commemorate that alliance and to celebrate America's progress toward liberty for all. With the fall of their own republic, the cause of liberty was faltering in France. La Boulay hopes this gift will rouse a new call for democracy there. He shares his idea with a small group of colleagues and friends. Among La Boulay's most enthusiastic supporters is Frédéric Auguste Bertoldi, a talented Parisian sculptor. He is fascinated by the colossal monuments of antiquity and the powerful impact of using figures of immense scale to express enormous ideas. In 1871, Bartholdi crisscrosses America, gathering inspiration, discussing the project with publishers, politicians, and even President Ulysses S. Grant. He searches for the perfect site and finds it, Edlow's Island, just a tiny speck of land in New York Harbor. But to the artist, a dramatic stage for the colossal statue he'd begun to envision. New York Harbor, one of the busiest in the world, teams with international trade and an increasing flow of immigrants drawn to and fueling an unprecedented surge of industry and wealth in the wake of the Civil War. Every ship coming and going will pass the statue in the harbor. New York has become the very gateway to the new world and the freedom America has come to represent. La Boulay sets the project in motion. He secures permission to place the statue on Bedloe's Island and launches a massive fundraising effort. His plan calls for the people of France to donate the statue. Americans will provide a grand pedestal for the statue on the chosen site. Bartoli spends years on the design. The ancient Roman goddess Libertas has long been used to personify the idea of liberty. But the idea of liberty is controversial in much of the world. It suggests violence and revolution. In the end, Bartoli's vision transforms the goddess into a bearer of law and light. He calls his statue, Liberty Enlightening the World. It is an immense idea, and in 1875 in Paris, Bartholdi begins to build an immense statue of the figure Liberty. Working from Bartholdi's final model of the statue, just four feet tall, the sculptor and his team of skilled artisans begin to create a statue that will be 151 feet tall. They make thousands of measurements in order to fashion accurate, full-scale plaster casts of the statue's individual parts. They build 300 wooden forms that follow every contour of the plaster models, then use the forms to hammer sheets of copper into shapes that will fit together like gigantic puzzle pieces. The epic puzzle takes more than five years to complete. Bartholdi stokes public enthusiasm with showings of work in progress in the United States and Paris. He sells tickets for tours of his workshops. Meanwhile, the sculptor has engineering problems to solve. 
The statue's copper skin weighs more than 179,000 pounds. Liberty cannot stand without internal structure. For this, Bartholdi turns to the brilliant Alexander Gustave Eiffel, later famed for what Americans call the Eiffel Tower. Paris, 1881. The full statue begins to rise up, towering over the neighborhood surrounding the construction yard. By completion, more than 300,000 people have come to behold her. Dignitaries, artists, writers, and everyday gawkers, all stunned by her scale and stirred by the power of the idea she conveys. Bartoldi's crew disassembles the statue and packs it in more than 200 crates for its voyage across the Atlantic. With its heavy load, the ship plows through storms and high winds and nearly capsizes. But on June 19, 1885, the French ship Isère enters New York Harbor, met with enormous fanfare and a naval parade. Over the next year, atop the new pedestal on Bedloe's Island, the statue rises again, now to an astounding 305 and a half feet, from the ground to the top of her torch. October 28, 1886, America formally dedicates the Statue of Liberty. Visitors experience what is perhaps Bartholdi's greatest stroke of genius. They can go inside the statue. Rising up through the structure, the statue is not just an engineering marvel, but an unforgettable metaphor for the dynamic and inspiring force of liberty. Visitors see the world as liberty sees it. The statue lifts a torch of hope, lighting the way to possibility, to the promise of liberty and justice for all. Like liberty itself, the statue began as the impulse of a human heart. The Statue of Liberty is at once an emblem of America's highest ideals and the deep ironies of our history. Broken shackles at her feet, but the legacy of slavery still very real in 1886 as the statue is dedicated. Human justice and equality guaranteed by the Constitution, but only a minority of Americans are allowed to vote. In the New York Harbor, she quickly becomes an icon for America and begins to gather layers of meaning as the United States rises to power and prominence in the world. Her light inspires hope in the hearts of millions of immigrants from everywhere on earth. She sees American troops off to war and welcomes them home. The ideals for which she stands resonate far beyond this harbor. She becomes an icon for something far beyond America. She stands for the ageless human yearning to live free. She stands for the belief that we are all born with the right to express the impulse of a human heart. She stands for the freedoms of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and for the laws that guarantee those freedoms for all. That is the hope that speaks to the ages.
That is liberty enlightening the world.